Hello everyone, today's lecture is about strategic business units that is SBUs. We will start today's chapter with understanding and defining strategic business units and its need in large organizations. Further, by analyzing the steps involved in SBUs, strategic management process in detail. And this session ends with the advantages and disadvantages of strategic business units. In this module, you are going to study about the importance of strategic business units in detail, the need for SBUs, structure of SBUs and their role in strategic management, the role of SBUs manager and the process of strategic management. The session will conclude with the contingency strategies, advantages and disadvantages of SBUs. The subject expert is Dr. Prasada Rao Bondada, MBA. PhD working as an associate professor in the Department of Management Studies of Sri Sivani College of Engineering, Sri Kakulam, and I'm Shivangi Anand. Introduction The Tata Group of India comprises over 100 operating companies spread across six continents. The company operates in different markets that are complex in nature and difficult to manage. Hence, reorganization and decentralization was essential to provide a clear focus on the business. Many Tata Group companies, including Tata Motors and Indian Hotels, are following the strategic business units, that, that is the SBU model. Tata Chemicals has created three strategic business units by forming independent management teams for the chemicals, fertilizers and salt additives divisions. The move aimed at bringing in a sharper business focus has resulted in each SBU being handled by a Chief Operating Officer, that is the COO. Tata Consultancy Services, that is TCS, has created a new strategic business unit called TCS Financial Solutions. As an SBU, TCS Financial Solutions will function as a products company within the TCS family and will make growth in the financial products business. Using an integrated business model, the SVU will also influence the development and system integration competencies of TCS for customer activities. TCS Financial Solutions will have a separate management team headed by the President. The SVU will have sales, support, product management offices in all countries. The product offerings from TCS Financial Solutions will be positioned under an umbrella brand called TCS Banks. This is the not only strategy of Tata Group of Companies, but also all the large organizations like Reliance Industries Limited, Bajaj, Billa Group, Coca-Cola are following SBUS strategy. Hence, let us understand about the strategic management of SBUs in detail. Meaning of Strategic Business Unit A strategic business unit, popularly known as SBU, is a fully functional unit of a business that has its own vision and direction. Normally, a strategic business unit operates as a separate business unit, but it is also an important part of the company. It reports to the headquarters about its operational status. Gerald A. Cole defined strategic business unit as the principal business unit the large organizations, whether in public or private sector, is usually composed of several principal business units which make up the cooperative whole. These units may be divisions, major profit centers, headquarters units, specialist functions or departments, but they all have one thing in common. They are subject to the control and directions of a corporate group. 
Thus, all such units have their operational plans approved by the senior authority of an overall corporate plan. According to Lawrence R. George and William F. Gruix, a strategic business unit is an operating division of a firm which serves a distinct product market segment or a well-defined set of customers or a geographic area. The SBU is given the authority to make its own strategic decisions within corporate guidelines as long as it meets corporate objectives. The need for SBUs. A company in strategic management process may expand in both related and conglomerate that is non-related businesses. As the firm is growing, the management and administration of every business unit becomes difficult at corporate level. The organization structure becomes very complex and uncontrollable and may even lead to unprofitable. Hence, the centralized business administration at corporate level should be decentralized and the management of different units should be assigned to the key business firms of a particular area or region. Structure of SBUs The structure of SBU consists of operating units in which the units serve as an independent business. The top corporate officer assigns the responsibility of the business to the top managers of concerned business unit for the regular operations and business unit strategy. So, the corporate officer is accountable for the formulation, implementation and control of the comprehensive strategy at corporate level and aligns the SBU by way of strategic and financial controls. There are three levels in the strategic business unit structure. They are top level, in which the corporate headquarters remains at the top, middle level, SBUs of multiple businesses and lower level, the divisions of each SBU group by similarity. SBU operates as an independent entity focusing on a target market, but it has to report directly to the headquarters of the organization about the status of its operation. It is big enough to have its own support functions such as marketing, R&D, that is research and development, planning, production and human resource from the corporate level under which followed by the group of divisions of each SBU as explained in the Tata Group SBUs. A single strategic business unit is considered as a profit center and supervised by the corporate officers. It concentrates over strategic planning instead of operational control, so that all the divisions of the SBU can respond as fast as they can to the changing business environment. SBUs in strategic management SBUs as a part of corporate strategic management process cannot be understood without understanding the process of strategic management. Hence, let us discuss about the strategic management process of a business. According to Lawrence R. Josh and William F. Gluick, strategic management is a stream of decisions and actions which leads to the development of an effective strategy or strategies to help achieve corporate objectives. The strategic management process is the way in which strategies determine objectives and make strategic decisions. In fact, it is a process of strategy formulation, implementation and control. The term strategy is derived from a Greek word strategos, which means general ship, a comprehensive plan or a course of action or a set of decision rules making a pattern or creating a common purpose. The strategic management involves the three levels of strategies they are corporate level, business or sub-level and the functional level plans and policies. SBU executives as strategists if a firm is organized into the SBUs, the head of the SBU plays an important role in strategic management. If corporate managers encourage it, SBU managers will formulate the strategies for their units and businesses. Essentially, the SBU managers perform the role similar to those strategies at corporate level. This kind of involving the heads of SBUs in formulating strategies called as intrapreneurship in which the manager is encouraged to develop new ventures, 
Hence, the SBU managers under this situation play the role of entrepreneur and strategist. Every large business organization may have one too many SBUs. The strategic management process for a business which is organized into a single SBU is having the following steps. They are to determine the strategic intent, the environmental analysis, formulation of the generic alternative strategies, implementation of strategies, and evaluation and control of strategies. Let us discuss them in detail. First, to determine the strategic intent. Under this step, the head of the SBU will determine the vision, mission, and objectives of the business the business policies and short-term and long-term goals of the business with corresponding to the vision of the corporate will be formulated by the top managers of SPUs. Let's discuss all the strategic intentions of the SPUs. Vision. Vision is the aspiration of a company. Typically, vision is defined by the corporate top-level strategist or the top-level manager for the SPUs. Vision is a broad and forward thinking states what an organization wishes to achieve in the long run. For example, the vision of Tata Motors Passenger Car Business Unit, that is PCBU, is to develop Tata into a world-class Indian car brand for innovative and superior value vehicles. Mission. Translating the organizational vision into action is mission statement. The mission statement makes the vision statement more tangible and comprehensible. The statement addresses what is our business, why we are in the business, who are our customers, and what specific needs we are going to serve. For example, the mission of Tata Motors Passenger Car Business Unit, that is the PCBU, is to be the most admired multinational Indian car company producing vehicles that people love to buy. Objectives, they are the end results that the organization is going to achieve through its existence and operations. Under this, both long-term and short-term, general and specific objectives and policies to accomplish the same are defined. Second, environmental analysis. Environmental analysis is a strategic tool generally called as SWOT analysis, where S stands for organization strength, W stands for its weaknesses, O stands for opportunities posed by the external environment, and T stands for threats posed by the business environment. It is a process that identifies all the internal and external factors of the particular business environment. The analysis helps in assessing the level of internal strengths and weaknesses and external threats and opportunities posed by the environmental forces. The general external environmental factors for analysis and diagnosis are socio-economic, technological, political and international. The industry analysis deals with the customers, suppliers and competition. Internal factors like marketing, R&D, operations, corporate resources and finance are diagnosed for identifying strengths and weaknesses. Of course, in a single SBU firm, advantages are analyzed and diagnosed at the corporate level. In multiple SBUs, they are analyzed and diagnosed at SBU level and the same re-evaluated at the corporate level and is compared across all the SBUs. Third, formulation of the generic alternative strategies. Planning horizon. For a typical SBU, the planning horizon is usually one to three years unless the organization is unitary in nature. In this case, the SBU is one and the same as corporate whole and the horizon is likely to be longer, maybe two to five years. Business organization that operate in a turbulent industry where change is frequent and rapid will usually devise corporate plans that can be implemented on a rolling basis on the back of SBU or other operational level plans. Thus, firm talks of their rolling five-year plans within which their one-year business unit plans are implemented, monitored and fed back into the corporate plan. Under this planning period, the SBU may formulate the generic alternative strategies for its implementation. The generic alternative strategies for SBUs. 
after environmental scanning based on the strategic intent, the strategists of SVUs formulate the following alternative generic strategies. They are stability strategies, expansion or growth strategies, retrenchment strategies, and combination strategy. Let us discuss them in detail. Stability strategies. Stability strategies are chosen when the firm is doing well and continues to serve the current market with the same product or services. The firm expects risk in expansion of the present business and if the business environment is uncertain. Under this strategy, the firm focuses only on internal improvements and functional performance of the firm. Types of stability strategies, Lawrence R. George and Rajiv Gupta have proposed the following stability strategies for SBUs. They are seeking internal production improvements and marketing efficiencies or reorganize its present structure. Maintaining market share externally or improved products in the present mix, it may react to the competitor in passive mode in defending its position in the present market. Let us discuss them in detail. Internal stability. If the firm is having consistent product mix and wants to maintain the same business, they simply concentrate on internal production efficiency and improve their output. And also concentrates on marketing efficiency to maintain the market share in the present market. Sometimes it may reorganize the internal structure for the same purpose of improving efficiency in production as well as marketing efficiency. Maintaining market share. This is a stability strategy for external environment in which the firm only concentrates on defending its market share and maintain its position. The firm will not go for any expansion of business but want to maintain their market share. While defending its market share, the SBU may improve the features of its product according to the market trends. Passive reaction to competition. Under this strategy, the firm will not react aggressively to the strategies played by its rival firms, but it reacts passively to maintain its market position. This strategy helps SBU protect from cutthroat competition and maintain its position in the market. Advantages of stability strategy. A stability strategy provides the following advantages. Less risky when compared to new business, easy to improve internal performance, too much expansion may lead to inefficiency. Optimum utilization of organizational resources. Expansion or growth strategies. These strategies are chosen under when the firm wants to serve more markets with new products. The firm focuses on major increase in the pace of activities of its present business. Types of expansion strategies. According to William F. Glueck, there are eight types of expansion strategies that a firm can choose. They are internal expansion, external expansion, related business expansion, unrelated or conglomerate expansion, horizontal, vertical, active, and passive expansions. Let us discuss them in detail. Internal expansion. Under this strategy, the SVU may choose to penetrate existing market or add new products to the product mix or add new markets to the existing product mix. External expansion. Under this strategy, the SVU may take part in acquisitions and mergers. An acquisition is the purchase of all or a portion of a corporate asset of a target company. For example, acquisition of LinkedIn by Microsoft, a merger occurs when the firm purchases the target firm, both cease to exist and in its place form a new, a combined company. For example, Tata Consultancy Services, that is TCS, the flagship software unit of the Tata Group, has merged with the listed CMC, that is the Computer Management Corporation Private Limited, with itself as part of the group's converted efforts to merge its IT businesses under a single unit. Related expansion. Under this strategy, the SBU seeks synergy from new product, markets, or functions. This is also called as concentric diversification. For example, Dr. Reddy's Laboratories has acquired a selective portfolio of UCB, that is Union Chimicoe Belge, the Belgium company for pharmaceuticals. Unrelated expansion. This strategy is also known as conglomerate diversification under which the firm chooses unrelated products and markets or functions to expand their business. For example, 
India Tobacco Company Limited, that is ITC, has evolved from a single product company to a multi-business corporation. Its diverse businesses include fast-moving consumer goods, hotels, paper boats, paper and packaging, and agribusiness. Each of these businesses is vastly unrelated from the others in its type and the basic nature of its activity, all of which influence the choice of the form of governance. Horizontal under this expansion strategy, the SBU adds complementary products or market to its existing business. Vertical expansion. Under vertical expansion, the firm adds new function to its present activities. For example, a manufacturing firm may participate in marketing and other selling functions. Active expansion. Under this expansion strategy, the firm is active at innovative and entrepreneurial moves by reacting aggressively to the competition. For example, Reliance Industries, which entered into telecommunication with SBO Geo, expanding very rapidly than its competitors Airtel and Idea Cellular. Passive expansion. Under passive expansion strategy, the firm imitates the R&D, that is the resource and development, and new products of the competitor or the market leader. Retrenchment strategies. The firm may choose the retrenchment strategies in the following conditions. When the SBU is not doing well and find it's necessary to reduce its product or service lines, markets or functions. The firm suffer losses and negative cash flows. The firm has not met the objectives formulated. If the environment is threatening the business, there is a pressure from the stakeholders better opportunities posed by the business environment. Types of retrenchment strategies. The possible retrenchment strategies are as follows. They are turnaround, divest, harvest, and winding ups. Let us discuss them in detail. Turnaround. This is internal retrenchment strategy calls for reducing cost by layoffs, reduces assets, may drop products, may limit its function. For example, Many IT companies conducting layoff of their employee to cut costs. Divestment. This is external retrenchment strategy where SBUs may divest their investment, liquidation of assets under bankruptcy. For example, Kingfisher Airlines. Harvest. This strategy is for both concentric and conglomerate business wherein the firm eliminates unprofitable related and unrelated products, markets or functions also eliminates complementary products or markets and reduce functions. Winding up. This strategy is the final and in worst cases, the firm takes winding up and go for full liquidation. For example, Satyam Computers has made a winding up and sold to Tech Mahindra. Combination strategies. Apart from the earlier three types alternatives, the firm may choose a combination strategy. The following are the types of combination strategies that SBUs can select. They are subcontracting, cross-licensing and joint ventures and grow to sell out. Let us discuss them in detail. Subcontracting. In subcontracting strategy, the SBU assigns some part of their business and to other firms. When the present capacity of SBU is limited to meet the customer or client's requirement, it will choose the subcontracting strategy. Cross-licensing. In this strategy of cross-licensing, the SBU wants to spread the business through licensing to the agencies, in which the firm can enjoy the coverage of mass market with limited capital by giving licenses to the potential aspirants. Joint Ventures. In this strategy, the SBU join hands with other firms in a cutthroat competition. The partnering firms may be the other unrelated firms or the competitive firms like Hero and Honda as a strategic alliance. For example, Maharaja Heritage Resorts Limited, where ITC Limited has an ownership interest of 50%, is a joint venture with Jodhana Heritage Resorts Private Limited. The joint venture company currently operates across India under the Welcome Heritage brand. Grow to sell out. In this strategy, the firm with its professional competitive advantage grows to some extent and sell out its business to some others. In general, many firms grow up to the maturity stage and earn as much as they can and sell their business to others. Implementation of strategies. 
Strategic implementation simply is the process that puts plans and strategies into action to reach their objectives. A strategic plan is a written document that makes the company's plan happen. Strategic implementation is important to a company's success. It addresses who, where, when, and how to reach the desired goals and objectives. It focuses on the entire organization. Implementation process. Any SVU which is planning to implement strategies must be aware of the procedure. The procedural framework consists of a number of following legislative enactments and administrative orders. They are Company Formation, Licensing, Securities and Exchange Board of India, that is SEBI, Registration and Foreign Collaboration Procedures, if any, for Foreign Exchange Management Act, that is FEMA, Requirements, Import and Export Requirements, Patenting and Trademarks Requirements, Labor Legislature Requirements, Environmental Protection and Pollution Control Requirements, Consumer Protection Requirements and Corporate Social Responsibilities. Structural Implementation a typical SBU is implemented through a three-level organization structure as discussed in the structure of SBU in the previous topic. Evaluation and control of SBUs. There are six steps in SBU evaluation and control. They are setting the standards for performance, stating the standards of deviation, measuring the actual performance, comparison of performance with standards, identifying deviations, tackling action and proactive. Let us discuss them in detail. Step 1. Set the standards for performance. It is the first step in evaluation and control of strategic management of SBO, by which the actual performance will be judged and appropriate action will be taken. While setting the standards, they will specify more and detailed expressions of strategic objectives and importance of its attainment. Step 2. Statement of the standard deviation. Though the standards are fixed in specific terms for each SBU, some remedials on acceptance of tolerance is established as standard deviations. Normally, deviation from standards will be tolerated within certain control limits only when it is impossible to attain certain goals. Step 3. Measure the actual performance after the performance for a specific period of time and on specific goal. The managers will measure the performance of each SBO, in which they identify the role and behavior. Measurement techniques are different from situation to situation and SBO to SBO. Step 4. Comparison of performance with standards. Comparison of performance with standards is a simple task but very important to judge the performance of any SBU in other SBUs. Step 5. Identifying deviations after comparison, the manager will come to know whether the SBU's performance is equal to standards established or not. If the actual performance is more deviated from the tolerance level, then they will take corrective actions. And step 6. Action and proactive, when the performance of SBU is satisfactory, it will be given more autonomous in future planning and treated as the core business. If any SBU is not reaching its goals as against the standards fixed, for them corrective action must be taken and see that the deviations will never be repeated in future. Contingency strategies. Nowadays, the SBUs are acting dynamically to changes in the business environment. This type of choosing dynamic strategies according to the situation is termed as contingency strategies. This strategy will help the SBUs protect their business as well as retain their customers. Advantages of SBUs There are several advantages of strategic business units in an organization. They are responsibility, accountability, accountancy, strategic autonomous, and funds allocation. Let us discuss them in detail. Responsibility. As an independent business unit, SBU takes responsibility for its business. In the complex business structure, it's very difficult to handle the large business. Hence, the responsibility of a particular business is assigned to the SBU will reduce the burden to some extent. Accountability. 
while handling multiple business brands or products it is difficult to corporate level to look after every separate business units which are accountable for the success or failure of the business or product by making this business units accountable the company can directly take feedback when hard decisions are to be taken accountancy balance sheets profit and loss accounts are prepared separately for separate strategic business units SBUs make the accountancy more transparent and at the same time the corporate office will make investment decision based on their statements strategy for example nestle have four different strategic units maggie deals with food products other deals with dairy products like nestle milkmaid and the third sbu deals with chocolate products like kitkat which helps nestle in implement change strategy for each business autonomy the top managers of the sbus get more freedom to manage their own unit which gives them the opportunity to be more creative and innovative and empowers them for making decisions resource allocation resource allocation becomes easier for the corporate office when it is organized into the sbus depending on the performance resources are allocated this advantages of sbus Besides the number of advantages, the SBUs also provide the following disadvantages. It's difficult to SBU manager to contact with the corporate office. It may cause the internal tension between SBUs due to their performance and difficult access to internal and external sources of funding. It may be the cause of the unclear roles and responsibilities with regard to the management activities. The corporate level office may find it difficult to manage once complete autonomous is granted to the SBUs. This is the end of today's session. I hope you like this session. Have a nice day. Thank you and goodbye.